Hi, this is PDF Berserk Arcade at BerserkArcade.com, and this is tutorial 249. Now, when we left off in our last tutorial, we were playing around with... Uh, we'd actually just discovered that we had a problem with our uh, code that we're using to turn our character. And I wanted to start addressing that this uh, in this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and actually try to get these windows open up to the right screen. Uh, for some reason, they want to keep opening up to the other monitor. Uh, but that's fine, we got them here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually come into our move uh, function here in our AI class. And I've gone ahead and commented out all our other debugs. And what I want to do is actually create another debug. Uh, just so all my debug logic is put out onto one line. So I'm going to go ahead and go debug.log. And the things I want to know, uh, what do I have targeted? So I can say target, leave a space, and... Uh, add in the variable target and get the name of whatever it is I have targeted. I also want to know uh, what it is that, uh, well, how far away it is from me. So I can leave a slash there and say distance. And the line right above this, we're actually calculating the distance. So I'm going to put that in. I'm just going to save that off right now. I'm going to head back into Unity and give that a quick check. Uh, we'll clear that off. We'll start it up. Uh, let's, well, after it's done updating, I'll go ahead and pause the updating to Dropbox because I don't need to have all these changes saved to the system upstairs just yet. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and clear the uh, console. Uh, I'm going to run up to the mob. Now, we can't run up directly behind it right now because it won't work. Uh, but if we run up from this side, uh, we see it is getting closer. Uh, it does have me targeted, and I'm getting the distance. I'm also going to want to start getting the angle. Uh, we'll address that in a bit. Uh, let me just see if I run away. Yes, it does switch to the spawn point, and as we can see that it's it's stuck. It's not actually uh, getting any closer to the spawn point. If we come over to the scene and take a look, here it is right here. Now, it only has one animation, so it just keeps doing the same one over and over. So if we actually go ahead and... We'll basically guide it, get it turned around a bit. We'll collide with its. There we go. Now it should go in. Now, as we see now, sure enough, it is heading towards the spawn point again. And if we zoom out, we can see him going in. And he gets pretty close, not quite within range, but he does stop. So that's another thing we have to address. So there's two things we're going to want to play around with now. And that's getting him to rotate regardless of where his target is uh, according to him and also figure out why he's not going all the way back to uh, his spawn point. So let's stop that. I'm going to go ahead and clear it. So we'll head back into Mono Develop, and I'm going to scroll down. Um, well, let's go right underneath where we're checking to make sure that uh, uh, if we have the uh, if the target name is the spawn point and right under that we actually used to do the move forward or not. I'm actually going to change it and I'm going to do the rotation first since we're having problems with that right now. So I'm actually going to go comment out all the old rotation code. And what I'm going to do is um, do a different way using a quaternion. And I don't really want to use this way in the final project simply because I want to actually pass things off to the advanced movement script. Uh, just so we can take care of, like, we can abstract exactly what's supposed to happen uh, when they turn. Maybe you have a certain animation you want to play or certain things you want to happen while your uh, player or your mob is rotating. Uh, but for now, I really do want to get this fixed where it'll actually, you know, once it targets me, turn around and face me and also uh, not get hung up and not be able to rotate towards its target. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's uh, start working on that. So I'm going to start off with uh, a quaternion. And I'm just going to call this rot uh, for rotation. Now this is going to be equal to uh, a quaternion dot look rotation. And basically we're just telling it what rotation we actually want to look at. And this is going to be based off of our target dot transform dot position. So vector three for that. And then we also want to pass in our vector three. And I'm not sure if we're actually caching our vector, or sorry, our transform. I'm just gonna come up and take a look. We are, that's my transform. That's usually what I use. 
Uh, so I'm going to go underscore my transform dot position as well. And we'll just close that off. And now I'm going to come underneath and set uh, my transform. Whoops. Helps if I spell everything right. My transform dot rotation is going to be equal to quaternion dot. And we're going to use a slurp. Uh, we want it to be spherical when it rotates. So we'll use the slurp as opposed to a linear one, which is the lerp. Uh, if you want to know what the difference is, go ahead and look at the documentation on Unity. Uh, they're described pretty well there. And what I want to do is pass in my transform dot rotation and the rotation that I actually want to interpolate between, which will be rot. And then we also want to pass, we want this to be smooth over uh, uh, the amount of frames that it runs. So we're going to use time dot delta time, maybe. <laughs> And we want to add some sort of modifier to this. For now, I'm just going to use a hard typed number, but later on we should take this out and you know either create it as a variable or some sort of constant that we can manipulate up top. Uh, for now, I'm just going to be using it here. Uh, I do know that I eventually I'll probably want it to be um, augmented in some way by the character speed. This is also another reason why I want to be able to move uh, these couple lines of code out to our advanced movement script. But since we're not working on the advanced movement script just yet, I'm going to put them in here, uh, take some notes saying that, hey, you know, we eventually got to move this out. But uh, for now, let's just get it working right here. A anyway, so I'm not really sure exactly how fast I want it. Uh, let's just do a five. And we'll start it off as a float. And I'm going to close this off. Uh, that should be okay. This is the move forward stuff. I'm going to leave that there for now. Uh, let's go back into our game. Uh, no error, so let's start it up, and we'll go ahead and run into the portal. And I'm just actually going to clear this, even though it does scroll by so fast, it zips anyway. But anyway, uh, now we run up behind him. Uh, he's ro rotating, not exactly the way we want him to rotate, though. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to head back into Mono Develop. So it looks like we have an error in our code, and it is right here. We're actually supposed to use a, a takeaway sign here. Uh, we're subtracting the differences, so let's go ahead. We'll save that off. Uh, let's head back in, and that should do it. Uh, we'll find out. And we'll run back in, and we'll run up to uh, our mob, and it should rotate nicely for us, and there we go. Uh, now we can actually see, uh, seem to, as you see, it is fairly smooth. Uh, we can seem to kind of get behind them. And we don't really want that. So we're going to want to change the speed at which he rotates. So I'm actually just going to increase this to a 6. And try it again. You're going to want to tweak that value to um, get exactly the desired effect that you want. And keep in mind that we are going to be switching that over to some sort of variable that we can modify a little bit later on. And of course, we could use some sort of constant for uh, a base value. Uh, we can't get, well, we are still getting, it's better. Uh, it seems like he can keep us in front now for attacking because we don't want him attacking behind. And we can't run through our care, the, the mobs. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but now we run through our portal. If we turn around behind. Now when we run through our portal, he should uh, return back to his spawn point. Let's try that out. And if we look, sure enough, he's headed back. And let's see what happens there. Uh, then we get a, a null reference there. <laughs> and he keeps running. Okay, well, let's see what this null reference error is. Uh, this is we're coming in here. We're trying to get uh, while well, the target transform and because of up here uh, We have the, the target is equal to null. We're setting the state to equal idle uh, But after it's done this it's popping back out and trying to go down here. So all we really need to do is just add a return here uh, That way there it just doesn't do the rest uh, There's a few things down here 
I could probably switch uh, rotation damp to be our new variable for here. Uh, I'll address that a little bit later on. Uh, we're probably going to be just deleting all this. But anyway, uh, let's make sure this is saved. And we're going to go ahead and try that out. Get him to chase this. Get him to run back to his uh, spawn point. And the air should be gone. So we'll run up. There we go. He's now chasing us. And we do seem to be, well, right now we seem to be pretty close in the same speed. So there he is. He's running back to his spawn point. And we're getting the target is null. Uh, well, I'll show you that in just a second while we're getting that. That comes into the search where we're setting, if uh, we don't have a target, we set the state to idle. Uh, but unfortunately, what happens is it just keeps going through. And even though we set it to idle, when it gets down here, it sets it to the side. So what we actually need here is an else block. Now, so if the target is idle, or sorry, if the target is null, set the state to idle, else, all this stuff. So I'm tab it in there, chop it out, paste it in, uh, just format it just a bit. There we go. Put another line here. Um, see the side goes to search, and I think that might clear up all the stuff that we, we immediately needed uh, to take care of. So we'll just run up, get him to chase it again, and make sure everything's working right. And we'll head into the portal. He runs back home. Uh, we don't really need to run through. I just kind of want to see what's going on. And there we go. We say target is null. Uh, he still keeps running. So we actually have to send the command to actually have him stop running as well. Uh, but even though this is red, it's not actually an error. It's because we're debugging it out as a, an error. Uh, but we actually do have to send the command to stop running. And let me see, I'm going to actually do this down here. So let's go ahead and let me see here. We could just send one of these. Uh, we're probably better off to send both for now. So just in case he ever does get rotating. So as you can see, we're going to be rewriting this move function uh, quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit. I'm just going to put a space there. So let's go ahead. Uh, we'll try it one more time. Everything should be kosher now. As you see, the uh, finite state machine did stop, but unfortunately, we did not reset the flags for the advanced movement script, and he just kept running. And I'm sure if he would have been rotating, he would have just kept rotating on the spot as well. But let's go ahead. We'll try one more time and cross our fingers. And he's running back. And we'll go take a look. Oops, I, well, if you pause the video and take a look, you'll see that he actually uh, does get there and stop. Uh, I got too close. Uh, let's just quickly do that one more time. Uh, the problem we're having now is that he's actually gonna rotate and look up at our spawn point. And that's what I'm gonna wanna take care of next. Uh, is the rotating on the x-axis. I don't really want that. So when he's running, say, downhill after us, I don't want him angled or leaning forward. And likewise, when he has something above him that he's targeting, I don't want him angled forward like that. Uh, but anyway, that's in a later tutorial. Uh, for now, we do actually have him returning back home. Our finite machine is stopping once he gets there. And let's go over and take a look at him. Uh, we might be able to get to see him. There we go. He's pretty close to his uh, spawn point. See, the last one was 3.46. And I believe I have it actually set to 3.5. Uh, 3.5. So yeah, once he's under 3.5, he stops, which we are. 
Uh, anyway, that's it for this tutorial. The next one, we'll, uh, well, we'll keep working along with this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.